Welcome everybody to Every Rock Has a Story. I am here today with Danielle LeBlanc, who is a PhD student at Boston College, which is the college that I'm at too. And Danielle is gonna tell us a story about a rock or maybe a whole bunch of rocks. We're gonna find out in just a little bit. So Danielle, thank you for being here. Welcome to Every Rock Has a Story. Tell us about yourself. I know that you're a PhD student in our department at Boston College, but tell us how you got into this field. Yeah, thanks for having me, first of all, Ethan. This is awesome, and I'm excited to tell everyone about uh, what I do as a PhD researcher. But I wasn't always a PhD researcher. I am originally from Louisiana. Um, ah, and in, born on the bayou, right? In the, in yeah. the bayou, exactly. <laughs> Uh, and prior to getting into earth science, I actually studied engineering um, and really yeah. wasn't sure as a kid what I wanted to do exactly. I had family and friends that were engineers and heard it was interesting, but I've always been really curious about the natural world. Uh, I've pretty much shifted gears to thinking about climate and ocean history. I okay. think that's where my true passion lies. But what did you bring to show us today? Right, so great question. Mm -hmm. I actually brought some ocean mud from the North Pacific Ocean. So Ocean mud. Ocean mud. From the North Pacific Ocean. That's exactly right. right. Did someone tell you this is called Every Rock Has a Story? <laughs> I was told that, but I also think every mud has its story. So that's the argument I'm trying to make today. Show us what you got. All right. So here we have a bucket with a little sieve in it. And so the sieve is just the same as a strainer you might use to get the water out of pasta. Okay. Except the pasta for me is going to hopefully be little shells and uh, rocks. Wow. Okay, so. And what's this? That's just some super clean water okay. to rinse things out. So I'm gonna put some gloves on. Just so we're gonna do an experiment here. We're basically gonna do an experiment. Oh, That's cool. Great. So I'm going to, we're all finding out together what is in this ocean mud. So how did you get this ocean mud? This, this right here, it's got a label on it too. <laughs> so where did you, how did you get this? Right. So I did not go hand pick it from the bottom of the ocean. There was actually a large boat that had to go out and send a core down to the bottom of the ocean and pull the mud up. And these boats are massive. You think about cruises that people go on for vacations. It's not quite that big, but it's still a really, really big boat that you have to get out into the middle of the ocean in order to get a small sample just like this and get it back to me. And it was sent in the mail. I was not yeah. out getting these samples myself, but... Uh, so that came from the bottom of the ocean. Bottom of the ocean. And then as a student, have you ever gone on a cruise like that to get your own samples? Not yet, but excitingly enough, next summer, uh, I will hopefully be going out to the North Atlantic to wow. be on a cruise for a month or two, which is- A month or two. Right, living on a boat for a month or two. Exactly. Oh my goodness, doing science, collecting, collecting ocean muds ocean like mud. this. Wow, let's see, right. convince us. So what we're all gonna find out together is what happens when we look at the larger bits and pieces in this ocean mud. So I was shaking it up a little bit before this and I'm gonna pour it through this sieve and see if we can find anything um, inside of it. So I'm gonna give it a pour. Let's find out what's inside. So we can hear stuff. Is There's something in there. There's something. There's something in that mud. So this, this is cool though, because there actually is something in there. So most people think mud is, you know, it's just mud. But I think what Danielle is showing us, this mud is actually, if you think about it, it's all little tiny little rocks and minerals. Some that are so small we can't see, but it's the bigger ones that Danielle is going to tell us about. So you see there are some yeah. slightly bigger pieces besides this one over here. So that was our experiment. And this one does have a few large bits. So why... Who cares? Why is that exciting that this particular mud has these larger chunks that are in this, this otherwise really fine-grained mud? Right, yeah. So the big, the big chunks are interesting because in the middle of the ocean, there's mud and there are fossil shells, but it's mostly really tiny pieces of mud and tiny fossil shells. So when we see something a little bit larger, we know that it wasn't ocean currents or underwater earthquakes that were bringing these pieces to our sites because it's so far out in the middle of the ocean, but instead it must be something else. And so if you think about it, what else, if there weren't humans around, what was dropping something 
rather large into the middle of the ocean. And the only answer that we can really think of about that, right, would be icebergs, right? Icebergs would have to be the thing. Icebergs. That, icebergs are the, mm -hmm. the, the, the thing that's bringing these larger pieces out into the ocean. So the icebergs come from a place like Greenland or a big ice sheet. Exactly. And then how do they bring chunks of rock? Right. So the way that the rock gets from the iceberg into or to the bottom of the ocean would be when the iceberg melts. It has these rocks and pieces inside of the ice. And so as it melts, those pieces actually trickle down to the bottom and settle on the ocean floor. It's kind of like if, if you wanted to do this, if you were a person, you could get yourself on a little raft, get your chunk of rock and just raft out there and just drop it into the ocean and you could do that, but that's not what we call this. You call this stuff what? This is ice rafted debris. Ice rafted debris. Not people rafted, but ice rafted debris. So what does it mean if you had a time in the past where there were lots of icebergs floating on the ocean? Right, so that would just mean that we had to have big ice sheets around because that's, that's what makes icebergs, right? Is having a big ice sheet that touches the water and the icebergs that break off of it. And then what, is it, like, what does it mean? Why do we care about how big these ice sheets were? Right, so it's important for us to study the history of ice sheets because we have two big ice sheets today that we care about, Greenland and Antarctica. Um, and we wanna know how they're going to respond in the future. What are they gonna do as climate changes? So uh, rather than waiting and seeing, it's great for us to study how ice sheets in the past, so extinct ice sheets, what have they done? We find that out by studying these uh, iceberg pieces in the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. And you're reminding me of a couple of the episodes that we filmed before. The, the, the first one is episode 32, if you remember that one? That was all about glaciers, all about glacier ice, because ice is actually a rock as well. Um, and the, the story in episode 32, as you know, Danielle, was all about one of the really significant things that can happen when all that glacier ice melts and goes into the ocean, which is, of course, sea level rise, sea level can change. How old is this mud? Do you know how old the, the mud on the seafloor goes back? So this is about 40,000 year old mud, but oh, okay. we can look back as far as about 180 million years in certain parts of the oceans. Not what I'm doing right now, yep. but there is some really old mud out there and we can learn some really amazing things from these uh, ocean sediment cores. That is fantastic. Super exciting work. Wow, everybody. That was a great story from Danielle. I just wanted to share with you a few things that I was thinking about when I was listening to Danielle in that episode. First of all, every mud has a story Every mud has a story. That's what Danielle told us. She's right. Danielle showed us that every rock, even a tiny pebble inside a mucky mud from the bottom of the ocean, has a story. In this case, that tiny little pebble in that ocean mud told a story about ancient icebergs, ancient ice sheets, ancient ice ages, and even helped us learn about future climate. You know, one of the things I like most about being a professor is that I have an opportunity every day to learn something new myself. A lot of times I learn from all the people around me. I think we learned something from Danielle today. I know I sure did. I wonder if you can think about the people that you learn from in your life every day. Your parents, your teachers, your friends, even your brothers and sisters. I want you to know that Every person you meet has their own story for you to learn from. All you have to do is ask, what is your story? And you'll learn something new. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.